Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the relationship between borderline personality disorder and emotional intelligence? To help answer this question, I'll be using an article that was published in 2017 by Peter and colleagues, and I'll put the reference for that article in the description for this video. So first I'm going to take a look at borderline personality disorder and then discuss emotional intelligence and then look at the relationship between these two constructs. So borderline personality disorder is a diagnosis in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM. It's a cluster B personality disorder. So this is the dramatic, erratic, and emotional cluster. It's in the same cluster as antisocial, narcissistic, and histrionic personality disorders. We see nine symptom criteria associated with borderline personality disorder. Frantic efforts to avoid abandonment, an unstable, intense relationship pattern. We see identity disturbance, impulsivity in at least two areas that could be self-damaging, suicidal behavior, gestures, ideation, affective instability, chronic feelings of emptiness, inappropriate intense anger, and paranoid ideation or dissociation. We also see there are other characteristics associated with borderline personality disorder that are particularly important to recognize in light of this discussion of borderline personality disorder and emotional intelligence. And these characteristics include an increased sensitivity to emotional stimuli, tending to experience emotions intensely, which is somewhat like what we see with the openness to experience trait on the five-factor model. Individuals who score high on openness to experience tend to experience emotions quite intensely. We also see with borderline personality disorder, it usually takes longer for an individual with this disorder to return to their baseline mood after emotional stimulation. So when they become angry or sad or excited or any other emotional state other than baseline, it just takes a little longer to get back to that baseline. So now taking a look at the construct of emotional intelligence. One of the difficulties in studying emotional intelligence is there is no single agreed upon definition. One definition we see that's fairly popular would be that emotional intelligence is the ability to perceive, identify, express, access, and understand emotions, and also the ability to regulate emotions. Now, this really makes a lot of sense that there'd be a relationship between borderline and emotional intelligence given this part of the definition, this difficulty regulating emotions. Now, we see that with emotional intelligence, it's actually a fairly important construct when considering different aspects of mental health. Low levels of emotional intelligence have been associated with lower levels of self-esteem, low levels of impulse control, which again we would think would be particularly relevant when talking about borderline personality disorder. We also see that low levels of emotional intelligence have been associated with higher levels of substance use, higher levels of stress, higher levels of suicidal ideation. We also see higher levels of aggressiveness, depression, and anxiety. In addition to these associations, we also see that low emotional intelligence is associated with poor interpersonal relationships, and we can see how this would tie to borderline personality disorder, and it's associated with loneliness. Now looking at this relationship between borderline personality disorder and emotional intelligence, what do we know from prior research? Well, we don't know a lot. There haven't been a lot of studies on this issue. There is some overlap between the construct of emotional intelligence and social cognition, and around social cognition, we do see mixed findings. But the findings generally lean toward this idea that there's no deficit with emotional regulation in borderline personality disorder, which of course is a surprising finding given the symptom characteristics of the disorder. Now in terms of this study, they looked at emotional intelligence from two different perspectives because again, there's no single agreed upon definition for emotional intelligence and there are several measures available that attempt to measure the construct. So the two measures they used here are the ability model and the mixed model. So at the ability model or ability theory, we see an instrument called the MSCEIT. And with the mixed model, we see an instrument called the EQI. So here, when I refer to the ability model, I'm really talking about that MSCEIT instrument. And when I'm talking about the mixed model, I'm talking about the EQI. When talking about the ability model or the ability theory of intelligence, we see that with this model, it really is treated as a type of intelligence relatively independent of personality. And we see when measuring emotional intelligence with this theory, with the ability model, that performance assessments are used. 
For example, having somebody attempt to identify emotions in faces. So with this measurement, there are right and wrong answers. Now with the mixed model, the mixed theory, we see that personality traits are part of the conceptualization. And the instrument here uses a self-report. So this study again uses both of these instruments because they didn't want to leave out any popular conceptualization of emotional intelligence. So using both instruments, they looked at three different groups in the study. We see that there were individuals who had a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder in one group. There was another group of individuals who had a cluster C personality disorder. So this would be avoidant, dependent, or obsessive compulsive personality disorder. And we also see that there was a control group. Now one of the difficulties with this type of study is that many of the individuals with borderline personality disorder also had a co-occurring cluster C personality disorder. Comorbidity within personality disorders is fairly common and would really be a problem with almost any design looking at the relationship between borderline personality disorder and emotional intelligence. One way to try to get around this limitation was to look at what the individual was trying to get primarily out of treatment. So was the primary focus borderline personality disorder or was the primary focus a cluster C personality disorder? That would help decide what group that individual would be assigned to. So what were the results from this study? Well, there were some interesting results here. With the ability model, so again, that's the MSCEIT instrument, only the ability to understand emotions was impaired in individuals with borderline personality disorder when compared to the cluster C personality disorder group and the control group. So what's really surprising here is the ability to regulate emotions was not impaired on this instrument. Now with the mixed model, with the EQI instrument, we did see that emotional regulation appeared to be impaired. But when looking at the results together, it appears that individuals with borderline personality disorder, at least according to these findings, have the ability to regulate emotions effectively, but subjectively experience deficits in emotional regulation that leads to them not using that ability to regulate emotions. So kind of an interesting finding when looking at borderline personality disorder, emotional intelligence across these two instruments. Now we also see here that comorbid borderline and cluster C personality disorder. So when an individual has both borderline and one of those cluster C personality disorders, this was associated with lower scores when compared to an individual with borderline personality disorder without a cluster C personality disorder being comorbid. Now this isn't surprising, but it's still an interesting finding. We also see that the severity of the borderline personality disorder symptoms was negatively associated when using the ability model. And this relationship was even stronger using the mixed model. We also see a positive association between emotional intelligence and IQ. Now IQ is a measure of general intelligence. Now again, this relationship was observed with the ability model and this relationship was stronger with the mixed model. So looking at all these findings, what can we take away from this? What can we learn from this study? Well, we see here that when treating an individual borderline personality disorder, we need to help the client to gain confidence using emotional regulation strategies. Because when interpreting the findings of the study, it does appear that a lot of individuals with borderline personality disorder do have that ability to regulate emotions. I hope you found this description of borderline personality disorder and its relationship to emotional intelligence to be interesting. Thanks for watching.